Welcome to Dr. Mary Travel Best's special episode on van life on the road. In this episode, the FAQ is, what are the pros and cons of living out of a motorhome or van? And the special topic is similar. It's on van life on the road. The lesson learned is, don't do what this guy did. And the tip is how to track your steps easily. Let's start off with the FAQ. What are the pros and cons of traveling on a motorhome or van while living on the road? Where can I park safely overnight, especially as a woman? So here are some of the pros. You can pick up and go quickly and easily. You've got lots of flexibility and convenience. Small spaces can be very efficient. The cons are you've got a lack of permanence. It's hard to get snail mail delivered. You don't feel like you have roots. You can get claustrophobic and small spaces may have few comforts of home. Now, let's talk about the parking question. Where is the best place to park for the night? You can Google cheap overnight parking and find paid overnight parking near an airport for some good rates. Other ideas include campgrounds or BLM, the Bureau of Land Management, hotels, neighborhood streets, casinos, truck stops, or Walmart parking lots. Parallel parking is best, but remember some spots are very noisy. The front of the van should be parked facing out, so you don't need to back out to maneuver your way out when you're leaving, especially if you're in a hurry. Your cell phone and your keys are the most important things to keep close by. So today's episode is on van life. Motorhome travel, it's hit a high point across the world, especially during COVID. My friend for 40 years, Mr. Wayne Brubaker, is someone who's smart about motorhome travel. I interviewed him about this van life, and he says he's not an expert, he referred me to Road Trekking Mike and the Wendlands YouTube travel channel, RV Lifestyle. So take a look at the show notes if you're interested. Wayne told me that in the 40 years that he's been involved in the RV business, he's never seen a market like it is right now. He said, I've seen several downturns followed by slow rises back up, but I've never seen dealers lots decimated in less than two months. Most lots are still very low on inventory and will be until the springtime. When you visit the Elkhart, Indiana area where they make the RVs, you'll see fields of RVs just waiting for parts to finish them. It's a supply chain issue. 80% of all RVs made in the US are made in one county, Elkhart County, Indiana. When you visit, you'll be dodging a lot of horses and buggies the Amish and Mennonites build RVs. This year, there were 426,000 RVs, and the prediction is for over half a million next year. My personal experiences in RVs started in the 1970s with family trips to places on the East Coast in and around New York. Later, we traveled from Chicago to North Carolina for a few weeks, and after that, I spent time in RVs and motorhomes in Las Vegas, and even at several annual San Diego Padres baseball opening day tailgate events where the motorhomes were stationary. Now, my brother has had an RV for several years and added many thousands of miles on it. So I asked him, he shared some of the best tips and tricks in solo travel in an RV. He's been doing a lot of van life travel for about 10 years. And he told me he considers his stealth van he can go unnoticed in nearly any city he wants to. He likes being able to park anywhere and just be unbothered. So if you're going on the road, here are some essentials to consider bringing along. So propane stove, and to go with these, a fire extinguisher and carbon monoxide protector to detect gas leaks. Other essentials you might need are a fan, a heater, lights, a solar charger, a skillet, a cutting board, a blanket and or sleeping bag, a compost toilet, chairs, awning, solar shower, and a table. But overall, 
be simple and minimal, and have fun in your van life. So today's lesson learned is to follow directions. The fastest way down the hill may not be a straight line down. When you're independent, you need to rely on others and directions. So try not to step out too far on your own if you don't know the terrain. A friend's brother went out for a hike straight down a big hill, which sounded like a good idea to him. It was in Palm Springs at the top of the scenic tram, which only takes minutes to go up. The clearly marked road down was recommended, but he tried to go straight down over the brush and got stuck. Days later, helicopters had to be sent to look for him. He was found, but here's the lesson learned. Follow directions. Today's travel advice is tracking your steps. I track my steps and use the pedometer app. It tells me how many steps, floors, and gives me badges when I complete streaks. There are monthly challenges too, so it helps me to keep track of my mileage. I also use a Fitbit too to tell me if I'm moving around enough. These are small reminders that I need to exercise and keeping track of milestones is one way that I can make sure I'm doing that. Today, I want to bring meaning to your travel. So send me your travel tip. You can visit my website, Facebook page, group, or Instagram. You can send questions to Twitter or blog, and maybe you'll see your tips in my next travel book on independent destinations. What's on your travel bucket list?